recording one of them now. Available at GetMarkMerch.com. I watched this movie not knowing what to expect. I'm not a Doctor Whoey. Or uh, they have special names for them, you know, the people who are real Doctor Who fans. But the film, it's called Doctor Who Am I? As I was saying before the news, it follows this writer who's kind of cast out by the Doctor Who community because he was the guy who was going to bring Doctor Who to America on Fox. Fox is going to do this show in 1996. It was a big premiere. It was going to be the hit that it was in Britain. And it didn't turn out that way, and it was controversial. And he, so from the outside, it looked like, you know, he was thrown out of that community forever. And then this is a story of his journey back in. It's really cool. Please welcome the co-directors of this film who join us now, Vanessa Yule and Matthew Jacobs, who is that controversial writer. Wow, look at you, Matthew <laughs> Jacobs. Very cool. I felt like I was living your pain as I watched the movie. <laughs> and Vanessa, and was your idea to kind of get him back into this and chronicle it in a film? Yes, uh, it was a motivating factor. <laughs> did you, uh, because you were friends prior, and did you see uh, how pained he was or had Ma Matthew tried to move on from having been this uh, controversial well, writer? <laughs> I didn't, he never talked about it. I didn't even know that he wrote Doctor Who. I suppose I could have looked, checked his IMDB, but he talked about, you know, um, uh, other credits, um, the Emperor's New Groove and all that. But so I was quite shocked when I heard he wrote The Eighth Doctor. And I mean, um, it was very funny. <laughs> I didn't know the controversy. <laughs> I love Matthew. He's hilarious. Mm -hmm. So it just seemed like it would be a, a great story to follow Matthew. Well, it, it sure is that. And, you know, Matthew, when mm -hmm. you say Doctor Who, like I was a writer on Doctor Who or I was a writer for a season of Doctor Who, however you say it, yeah. uh, you just think, oh, wow. I mean, that's like saying, you know, I wrote, you know, one of the Raiders of the Lost Ark episodes. You know what I mean? It's like you just can't imagine that there would be controversy with it but it was it was like the worst brag no wonder you didn't talk about it anymore why <laughs> for people who have who don't know and like i didn't know because i'm doctor who guy uh tell us why you became this sort of controversial figure in doctor who land i said that in the in the show we did i said that the doctor was half human and uh everybody for, I, I, I kind of did it out of ignorance in a way, but the, but the executive producer, Philip Siegel, really supported me on this. And, uh, um, and, I, and I felt that was the right thing. Um, I also had the doctor kiss um, and uh, the doctor had not really kissed people before. He wasn't seen as a romantic character in the classic doctor. So bringing those two elements to the table um was enough to sort of you know put the backups of put the backs up of certain yeah you know, it, it's hoobians. funny how they were so yeah. Yeah, get their backs up yeah right <laughs> <laughs> the, the, because matthew jacobs you really were going to be the guy to uh, bring this magic of doctor who to america and well, uh, again yeah. i just learned this in your film and so in 1996 the fox broadcasting company and they were doing well in the 90s, and they, they continue yeah. to be, you know, a powerful network. But the um, I'm talking about the main, you know, the Simpsons and uh, um, and House, and American Idol, and X-Files. Thank you. That was a big network. And you, Matthew Jacobs, are going to bring Doctor Who to this audience because the, I guess the rights had been acquired by Fox to do it. So you cast, who was it, Eric Roberts in it? And you, I mean, you had big names in this movie. Oh, it or was the, like a $6 million or $5.5 million dollar production which for doctor who was unheard of at the time and bbc universal and fox and prior to to doing the tv movie which it was meant to be a backdoor pilot prior to that it was a it was a series it was going to be a series and that was going to be done out of ambling but you know the the story of the documentary <clears throat> if anybody sort of tunes into the documentary expecting to see a behind the scenes of the tv movie they're going to be disappointed because really the story of the documentary is about vanessa and i making this journey into a world that we don't know the documentary itself is the story it's a yeah, documentary I, I, about making a documentary yeah <laughs> kind of. uh, yeah it's that's heavy meta for me yes. but I, I, 
I, but when I did, I guess I was taking the journey with uh, Matthew, with both of you, of course, but with this guy who seemed like such a nice dude. He tried to, you know, really invigorate this franchise for an American audience. And yeah. his decision seems smart to me. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I, uh, I. That remained, you know, the, that was the thread of the story. Of a guy has to sort of find out who he is before he can save the world. And, and I don't want to spoil it, so I'm not okay. going to spoil it. But I okay. do want to say that it did. Doctor Who Am I did pay off a couple of twists, like yeah. personal twists with you. And I what? was like, yeah, I was like, <laughs> wait a minute. Wow. And just when you've taken the big twist, there's another twist. And it's an emotional twist. I, I, I was really... Um, because for me, I, I didn't watch Doctor. I know it's a it's a truly a, a, an institution, you know, but I just never got into it, you know. And uh, so you, you you see the cosplay and you go to all these places. But your personal journey, I found compelling. Thank you, thank you, and thanks for watching it, and thanks for having us on this show. Of course, yeah. of course. Um, yeah, I so mean, a part of I mean, I love that's really great that you kind of explain that as sort of the, su the surprise is because a lot of people have that reaction of, oh, oh, this is actually going a lot deeper than I was expecting. So as Matthew said before, it's not just about Doctor Who fandom, but it's really kind of finding your place in community and finding a family that you didn't expect that you had. So we start kind of following Matthew. It's very funny. We're meeting all of these characters, but but slowly, if Matthew is dishing out these things as well, because everyone was so nice, so he's sort of like the the um, antagonist in some ways at the beginning. Very funny, Ricky Gervais kind of a guy. Um, but really, we peel back these layers, and it really comes to Matthew's story, and he goes to very vulnerable places that a lot of people can kind of identify with. Like, why do I love this thing that I love, whether it's Doctor Who or sports or some other fandom? And so it really kind of strikes a chord with people in a universal way. It's remarkable the generations that Doctor Who covers, you know, in the film. This is, and, and, and this is an important point. I was uh, telling somebody else about this after seeing the movie. I said, it's cool because it's not like just a CBS Sunday morning profile of like, oh, look at all the Doctor Who fans that turn on. Look how they dress up. It's like, you know, I, I couldn't have watched a movie like that. It's like, I don't need a movie like that. But this was that, but it, but it, but way more. I mean, that's, that, that may be just like, you know, that's the background sort of. Uh, this journey that Matthew takes is really a, an interesting one. And um, Matthew, what I wanted to ask you about the documentary, and Vanessa sort of uh, referred to it, you know, to following your journey. Did you find it difficult? Do you forget the cameras there? You seem very unvarnished, and that's a really great thing. Very authentic, you know. It, it, you. We were just kind of, we were shotgun riding with you on this uh, road trip. But I would think it would be hard sometimes to let your emotions show the way you did. Yes. Um, I mean, we were exploring as, as, as the story carried on and it, we shot it over a year really and, and a bit and a bit more. And when we got to Long Island, it sort of focused itself, you know, you see in the sort of second half of the movie and, it's um, fun. and yeah. uh, it, yeah. it became yeah. a little challenging because I started to realize that, in fact, my Doctor Who fandom was linked to something far darker in my life. Exactly um, right. That's the twist. That's one that's, of the twists. Yeah. And um, so it's, but, you know, it doesn't spoil it to know that, you know, people watch the film and um, and it is on, it, it, it obeys that simple rule of make them laugh, make them laugh, make them laugh, make them laugh, now hit hard. Yeah. Do you know yeah. what I mean? With, with what's that? No, absolutely, that's... absolutely. I, I, um, by the way, where can people see? I know there's a screening set up oh, in yeah. Southern California. Where can they see yeah. it, Vanessa? There's... It was oh, screening at the American Cinematheque this mm -hmm. Sunday. Uh, that's March, in Los Angeles, right? Lo yeah. In Los Angeles, that's okay. correct. In the Los Feliz Three. Um, mm -hmm. So if you, it's on the. Can we? We can send a link or we'll we'll blast it all over our social yeah, media. Yeah, please so do. We'll, we'll retweet it for you and we can also keep people posted on it. But can people stream it? Oh, we have a, yes. many Bay Area, Bay Area viewers. March, so. Right now, um, March 28th, Gravitas, who are the distributors, 
um, are going to um, are distributing it on um, iTunes, on um, Apple TV, on YouTube, oh, okay. on, on you know, on all the and on Amazon. You're going to be able to get Blu-rays. You're going to be able to get DVDs. The Look whole, the you, whole. Look at you, Matthew. You're a whole industry off of this movie. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, we are. Yeah. <laughs> this you is, ride again. You are, you are looking at American Anorak. <laughs> This is this is our company, the two of us. Um, uh, Vanessa edited it. Um, I and, saw that in the course, credits. Yeah, which of course is a major achievement. It's her first feature film as a director and as an editor, and she solo edited it. And it's 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 just beautifully. I I'm very very proud of the work she's done, um, and obviously she makes me look great, so I'm happy with that. Well, I'm also uh, you know I'm kind of I, I try to enjoy the film and then look at it sort of like maybe from a filmmaking perspective and all of these things. And I thought like music cues were really good, and like all the stuff that is sort of basic. Oh yeah, filmmaking you know did the so music? critical. Yeah, the, the music was done by a guy called Mark Leggett, um, mm -hmm. who did "My Name Is Earl" um, and worked with Dolly Parton, and and it's really it, he really did a beautiful job. And that was the idea was not to do a sci-fi score. Um, the idea was to do a to do a sort of dramatic score that's there and that's right and i think that, that was an effective choice yeah 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 so we, did you guys disagree about choices like that at all vanessa or were you and matthew pretty much in in lockstep we're often in lock we often agree with each other or if we have differing opinions we'll okay. sort of hash them through but you know it's like even when we go to a restaurant we're always ordering the same thing or the same <laughs> wine it's just sort of happens that way we're just kind of like mind meld a lot of the time <laughs> But you know, Mark Leggett's score, I must say, is fantastic. Um, we kind of got him because we had to finish in the pandemic. So we were able to, he was available and it was amazing because he wrote back right away, like, I know nothing about Doctor Who. Sure, I'll look at the movie, but he loved it and he brought his heart and soul to it. And it really brings this like psychological layer to it that I, as an editor or either, either of us, we didn't even realize this depth, the subtle depth that the score brought. Let me just ask as we as we wrap up the um, Doctor Who Am I, and you'll be able to see it in all those places that we've talked about on streaming, and and of course there's the screening in Los Angeles this weekend. But Doctor Who Am I, uh, you can Google it toward the end of uh, this month, and you'll be able to find all the places it's going. Google it. Yeah, but what I was going <laughs> to tell you is. Um, it, it made me wonder more about you, Matthew, like what you wrote after you, um, and maybe it was in there and I've forgotten and I got lost in some of the other stuff, but like you, you, you're very self-effacing, it seems, you know, you sort of, uh, self-effacing is a ding word, by the way, you're very, uh, you know, but you are self-effacing in this way that you make, you play down, you even, I think they super you as the mid-level mid -level writer. Right? I was told by my, by my agent, uh, 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 William Morris, Matthew, you're a mid-level writer, which means you'll <laughs> earn about this much, and it'll be, and I'm happy with that. But I'm going right. to give you to another agent. Um, <laughs> and so, and so it was because I'm more a polite breakup. Um, yeah. I, I mean, I love love agents. They give you these labels, um, and it's so great. what other it, kind of things were you writing on then after the right, Doctor Who thing? After Doctor Who, well, prior to Doctor Who, I'd done Young Indiana Jones, and I'd done, um, and we'd started what became Emperor's New Groove, and I went back to that, obviously, afterwards. And then, since then, I've done a whole pile of um, small indie movies, um, as well as, you know, things like Lassie and, and animation. That's great. Stuff. That's great. I know, so the, I do remember. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So there's a I whole, a whole Indiana list. Of, now. Yeah. yeah. There's yeah, a whole yeah, yeah. list of things. Michael Snyder, who got us in touch with you, he saw the film that Vanessa and I made, Your Good Friend, um, which is also which is set in San Francisco and is very much a fun fun movie in the same vein. So very we just meta. keep making movies. Very meta. <laughs> Again, it's a meta, meta. docu drama. You um, guys love the meta. I, well, I uh, I can't wait to cheaper. to to uh, to, see, <laughs> to see you after. Uh, I think this gets you know, some deserved adoration from the public. And uh, I, I'm looking forward to uh, keeping posted on you guys. I didn't know you were around, you know, but now I really, uh, I really enjoyed the ride. So I'm looking forward to the next one too. So well, thank Fantastic. you. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Mark.
Doctor Who Am I is the movie. Matthew and Vanessa. Thanks, guys. Very, very cool. Yeah. <laughs> I um I must tell you, I Hi, it's Mark, and I thought that was great. Hit the notification bell, you'll know whenever there's a new video being dropped, and please subscribe to our channel to help us save the universe.